And so now let's talk about the entity component system. Now the entity component system is kind of a paradigm shift away from the way we think about game objects, the way we think about working in Unity so far. It's not exactly complex, it's not very difficult, but it does require a mental shift in how you think about the, the pieces of your game. Uh, and again, we'll see a code example of this and you can get an idea of exactly what I'm talking about. But the first thing to understand is that we have these concepts of entities. So you can see I have three listed at the top of the screen, bullet, player, enemy. And these entities aren't game objects. They're not containers. An entity is really just a, a reference to data. And this data, it comes in the form of uh, uh, component data or entity data. And so you can see that my bullet has some render data, position data, spawning data. Enemy has render, position, health, and spawning. And the data itself has no functionality attached to it. It is purely data. We only have the data we need to perform some render function or some position function or something, just data. And then apart from these entities, which are purely just data, we develop these systems, all right? So I might create a render system or a, a health system. And the system is basically where I put all my functionality. And the system has a very crucial part to it, which is this filter. And you can see here for say the render system, the filter is render and position. So basically my render system is gonna say, find me every entity that has a render data component and a position data component. And then all entities are returned back to it and it performs some functionality on it. Okay, so the, the, the render system in this you know, more hypothetical example doesn't care if it's rendering a bullet, a player, an enemy, it doesn't matter. It just will process all of these the same based on whatever data we, we provide to those entities. You know, same with spawning system, find me everything that has a render and spawning, and again, this hypothetical example. Uh, and then it, it takes those, the system takes the entities that are returned by this filter and it performs some job on them. All right, so it says, all right, well, We'll do some some rendering or do some some health maintenance or you know spawn some new ones or or whatever, and so you know those are kind of the pieces of this. These these entities have this data component, and then we write these systems that process that data. And again, it's kind of a, a different way of thinking about it. We're going to look at an example. It's really once it clicks, it's actually fairly simple to kind of wrap your head around. So there are a lot of benefits to using this entity component system. So first and foremost, it's you know difficult to write non-performant code, really, uh, because of the way everything is separated out, the way everything is processed, it's really just sort of performant by default, right? Which is sort of how we describe it or how we talk about it. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is you know, a lot of things that we we talk about, a lot of a lot of talks we attend, a lot of a lot of things you know we write about and read about, it's all about optimization. How do I improve this code? How do I optimize this? Writing optimal code is, is difficult, right? And with the entity component system, it's much easier because it's more or less very optimal to begin with, right? So that's a, a huge benefit. Um, it's also easy to write reusable code, right? If you write a, a rendering system, that rendering system is more or less gonna behave on many different types of objects because, you know, rendering uh, is more or less the same process. You know, maybe you pass in some different data that makes it perform a little bit differently, but writing reusable code becomes simpler. It also gives you the ability to leverage this modern architecture for your hardware, utilizing more cores in the CPU, plus some additional things the CPU is able to do. And then this thing called archetypes, and archetypes are really basically each unique type of entity. So if I have an entity that has a uh, component data A, B, and C, that's an archetype. Whether it's an enemy or bullet, any entity that has those unique uh, uh, component data sets becomes basically what's called an archetype. And archetypes are all tightly packed together in memory so that loading, prefetching, all these things become much faster, like much faster. And you're going to see it's very impressive. And finally, we're later this year gonna be releasing something called this Burst Compiler. And the Burst Compiler is basically gonna be able to utilize a lot of the you know, newer functionalities that, that modern CPUs have to greatly improve performance. And uh, you know, we're gonna see this here in a little bit. So one of the things that gets asked a lot or confused a lot is 
whether or not the job system and the ECS are the same, are they different, do you have to use them together, you know, how does this work? Because we generally talk about them uh, in context with each other. And the, the fact of the matter is, is that no, we, we don't have to use them together. They're not the same thing. Uh, they work very well together, which is why we often show them. But uh, the, you know, the job system was, is coming out, uh, I believe, in uh, 2018.1. And, you know, the entity component system is going into preview, and then it's slated for 2018.2 and .3. But basically, the entity component system and the job system are separate things. You can use jobs without the entity component system. However, again, I'll state that they work very well together. And so it's often, you know, often you'll see them paired together because you, you de develop these entities, this component data, and then you utilize jobs to do all the processing on that data. So, you know, while they are separate, even today, you're going to see we're going to utilize them together.